Let me try this. There you go. We good? Tell sure. me when we're good, Aaron. Yep, we're ready. Great. Um, will the meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission for Wednesday, January 20th, 2021, please come to order. This evening's meeting will be a virtual planning and zoning meeting via the Zoom platform. Our procedures will be as follows. One, when you first enter the meeting, you'll be in a virtual waiting room until the meeting host admits you. Aaron and I will serve as co-hosts for this meeting. Please be aware that, if, that your camera, if you have one, and your microphone will be muted by the meeting hosts when you enter the meeting. Uh, you can turn on your camera at any time if you choose to do so, to be seen by others if you would like. In order to run an efficient and orderly meeting in this virtual environment, unless stated otherwise by the meeting chairman, uh, the meeting hosts will keep everyone other than the commission members muted. You will still be able to hear everything said by the commission members, even if you're muted and your camera is not on. There will be the opportunity for public comment during public hearings, at which time public participants will be unmuted. Three, the secretary will read the legal call of the meeting as published according to Governor Lamont's Executive Order 7B. Four, during the public hearing, the applicant will be invited to present the application, explaining to the commission and others present what is being requested. The meeting host will share related documents on the screen as needed. In addition, all applications and supporting materials for each application on the agenda are available through the public meeting calendar page on the town website www.ci.guilford.ct.us and also through a direct link on the planning and zoning page. Five comments of town agencies will be read for each application. If there are any, there will be clarifying questions from commissioners. Six, there will then be the opportunity for clarifying questions from the audience. Please raise your hand through the Zoom platform and wait to be called on and unmuted. First, those who wish to support the application may come forward. Second, those who oppose the application will then come forward. As this is the public hearing, it must be recorded. It is necessary for speakers to identify themselves each time they speak, stating their name and address. Seven, the applicant will then have the opportunity to address any questions or concerns raised by the public or commissioners. Eight, once the public hearing is closed, the applicant is free to leave or remain for the balance of the public hearings and the public meeting during which time the commission will try and reach a decision on each application. Each applicant will be notified in writing as to the decision of the commission and has the right to appeal to superior court if desired. Nine, decisions of this meeting are available the day after the meeting by calling the planning and zoning department at 203-453-8039 or emailing planning.zoning at ci.guilford.ct.us after 9 a.m. 10, all actions taken tonight by the commission will be on a roll call vote. All commissioners and staff will identify themselves for the record before speaking. Seated this evening are the following members. And I will hold on, I'll kick it back. Uh, and I'd ask you to just wave your hand and identify yourself. Scott Edmond. Hello. Richard Wallace. Evening. <laughs> Frank D'Andrea. Sean Cosgrove. Hello. And I am Phil Johnson. Uh, I believe that's it, right? It looks that way, unless we have anyone waiting. Good. Uh, staff present this evening are George Crawl, our town planner, Aaron Mannix, our zoning enforcement officer, Lisa Piombino, our planning and zoning administrative assistant. This meeting will be recorded via the Zoom platform and made available on the town website for viewing. Uh, as the, most of the, as all the items tonight have been continued from prior meetings, there is no legal notice. So we will proceed directly to the first item on the agenda, which is uh, Stephen uh, Vergadamo, uh, care of Bailey Building Company, Inc., 122 Seaside Ave, map 24, lot five, zone R3, <coughs> coastal site plan application for demolition of existing house and construction of new single family home. Uh, <coughs> is someone here to present on behalf of Stephen Vergadamo? I am. Uh, good evening, Jim Preddy, Briscolo Engineering. Uh, 420 East Main Street, Brantford, uh, representing Rogadamos. Um, uh, the parcel is 122 Seaside Avenue, uh, very close to the end of Seaside Avenue. Uh, it's about a uh, 15,400 square foot lot, uh, triangular in shape. Um, there you go. Uh, sorry. Uh, 
just myself here, sorry. Is that large enough, Jim? Sure, uh, it, it, I could share it as well if that's easier for you. But, um. Um, we don't have the ability actually to have applicants oh, no. share, so I apologize, um, but okay. I'm happy no. to scale out or whatever you need. No, not a problem. Um, so uh, as can be seen in the lower left-hand corner, uh, the existing uh, home uh, is right there. Uh, the proposed house is the darker structure that's sort of at an angle. Uh, over here uh, is a new two bedroom home. Uh, we have a new uh, two bedroom septic system going between the house and the street. Um, uh, prior to the last meeting when we were supposed to present, we got a um, letter from uh, uh, Jamie Sidoric from um, uh, Connecticut DEP uh, asking to have us actually flag the tidal wetlands instead of relying on the edge of the ditch. Uh, that's behind the property, uh, which we have done and added to the plan. So as you can see, it's not a very large fringe, but it is not exactly where the edge of the ditch is. Uh, so since that last meeting, we have adjusted the house, um, slid it north slightly, basically to get out of the 25 foot setback from that new tidal wetland line. Uh, we have provided also uh, some depressed grass areas to retain the first inch of water um, over uh, the roof and driveway areas um, as recommended by Kevin McGee. Um, we did get an email late today from your health department saying basically that they were okay with it, uh, location and size. There was uh, you know a couple of minor details, but conceptually they had approved it. They just have not gotten time to write formal comments. Um, uh, typical erosion controls, uh, the existing driveway will serve as the construction entrance. Um, there's a silt fence around the uh, back side of this, uh, the, basically the whole property, and uh, a top, top soil stockpile area, um, just there off the end of the house there, That's correct. Uh, and that's it. I mean, we, we uh, comply with the zoning um, requirements. We're just really here for a coastal site plan approval. Um, okay, there are a couple of letters from staff as well as um, as well as Ms. Sidoriak, Jamie Sidoriak. I don't know if that's a male or female, but um, so Sean, Mr. do you want to add? You want to tackle the letter from Kevin McGee? Yeah, sure. It's uh, dated January 20th to the Zoning Commission <clears throat> from Kevin McGee, Environmental Planner, regarding Coastal Area Management Review. Stephen Berg, Beradamo, 20, 122 C7 in Guilford, Connecticut, Sister Map 25, Lot 5. The applicant is proposing to demolish an existing house and reconstruct a new residence with a new septic system located adjacent to tidal wetlands. Stormwater from the driveway and roof are designed to discharge to grass basins. The coastal resource policies applicable to, for the property are coastal hazard area, coastal waters, intertidal flats, and tidal wetlands. The site plan provides for erosion and sedimentation control measures that are designed to protect the adjacent coastal resources. The work being conducted would have an impact on the adjacent coastal resources if the erosion and sedimentation control measures are not properly installed and maintained. In order to make sure that the coastal resources are protected, I recommend the following conditions of approval. One, Due to the close proximity of the work to the tidal wetlands, the erosion control measures shall be backed by orange construction fencing. Number two, the town of Guilford zoning enforcement officer should be notified <laughs> the sedimentation and erosion control measures prior to any demolition or site construction. Soil and stockpiles should be maintained, should be contained by silt fencing 
and or hay bales, soil erosion and sedimentation and control measures shall be maintained until vegetation is established or suitable material is, is installed to the satisfaction of the zoning enforcement, I'm sure, officer. Number three, the site should be inspected daily to make sure that all construction debris has been properly disposed of in a covered dumpster. Um, we also had a letter from Jamie Sidoriak, environmental analyst. Uh, Scott, you want to grab that one? Sorry, it's a little long, but. I... Yep, no problem. Uh, dated December 28, 2020 to Planning Zoning Commission. RE uh, CTDEP Coastal Site Plan Review for 122 site, uh, Seaside Avenue. Dear Commission members, thank you for referring to the above referenced Coastal Site Plan Review received by the Department of Energy and Ener Environmental Protection's Land and Water Resource Division, the department, on December 1st, 2020. We reviewed the application materials for its consistency with the standards and policies of the Connecticut Coastal Management Act, CCMA, uh, Connecticut General Statute Section 22A-90 through 22A-112, inclusive. Uh, based on this review, the department offers the following comments for the commission's considerations. Uh, proposal description. The subject property is a private triangular shaped uh, 15422 square foot lot, which hosts a small one bedroom cottage and above ground swimming pool. The site is not a waterfront lot and abuts land owned by the town of Guilford. There's a tidal ditch and associated wetland vegetation immediately east of and adjacent to the site, which drains into a catch basin through a 15 inch RCP uh, beneath Seaside Avenue. A fence line runs along the property line adjacent to the tidal ditch and wetlands. The proposal is to demolish the existing cottage, remove the swimming pool, and construct a new two bedroom single family residence with a deck, porch, and stairway and garage with deck and, over, and porch overhangs. Uh, the new residence is proposed to be built with a first floor elevation of 13 feet. The existing septic system is also proposed to be replaced with a new relocated mm -hmm. system. Approximately one to three feet of new fill is proposed for the installation of the new septic system. Coastal resources. Coastal resources at the site are significant and include coastal flood hazard areas, tidal wetlands and a tidal ditch. Jacobs Beach, a municipal shoreline recreation area with a parking area, outbuildings and small personal watercraft storage area and a sandy beach is located to the east. Uh, the proposed new structures lie entirely within, within FEMA designated special flood hazard area zone AE, elevation 12. The site lies between special flood area zone VE, elevation 13 to the west and zone VE, elevation 14 to the east. FEMA flood zone lines are not exact and may differ by as much as 15 feet. F flood zones are coastal resources that should be reserved for their intended purpose to allow the free flow of floodwaters across land and protected property inland. The materials provided for review do not include or show tidal wetland delineation at the site or adjacent tidal dish elevations. The, to protect tidal wetlands immediately adjacent to the site, the applicant should establish a minimum of two foot setback from any wetlands adjacent to the area where work is to be conducted. Such setback areas should be flagged so as to be readily identifiable by contractor personnel until the authorized work is completed. No equipment or material, including not limited to fill, construction materials, ex excavated material debris, should be deposited, placed, or stored within the setback area. The delineated setback area should not be used as a staging area or access way. Water quality. According to the applicant, the site's impervious surface would increase from approximately 14% to 27% as a result of the proposal. The proposal includes downspouts and splash blocks to be installed at all four corners of the structure in order to prevent erosion. Uh, sediment and erosion control measures in the form of silt fencing are proposed between the construction work area, topsoil material stockpile, and existing tidal ditch to the east of the site. As the site is a small lot and the work and material stockpile are proposed in such close proximity to the tidal ditch, at no time should sediment or debris resulting from the proposed work activities 
be caused or allowed to enter the tidal ditch and coastal waters. To prevent the pollution of the wetlands and coastal waters, adequate sedimentation and erosion controls should be installed prior to the commencement of work activities and should be monitored daily for impa uh, impairs, gaps, or openings immediately repaired if gaps and openings are found and maintained in optimal operating condition until the project is completed and the site is stabilized. The to further protect the wetlands and coastal waters from pollution, we recommend covering the stockpile with plastic, uh, especially prior to anticipated rain and storm events, and adding staked hay bales between the tidal ditch. Um, upon site stabilization, any and all sediment and erosion controls should be entirely removed and properly disposed of upland and out of tidal wetlands and coastal waters. We hope these comments are helpful to the commission. These comments do not necessarily reflect our other local planning, zoning, or ZBA variance considerations that may apply. For reference, an overview on Connecticut's coastal management program is enclosed. Should you have uh, questions on this letter or any other coastal management matter, please contact me, uh, Jamie Sidoriak at ct.gov. Uh, Jamie Sidoriak, environmental analyst. Thank you very much, Scott. Um, are there, so Aaron, you mentioned that uh, I don't see any attachments from the health department. That's correct. Um, we have not received any formal, uh, or the commission has not received any formal comments from the health director. Um, as Jim had mentioned, uh, there was an informal email that was sent from the health director um, to, a, whom I believe, the septic installer. Um, and I, I'm not sure if, um, Jim, if Sonia reached out directly to you or not um, before the meeting, um, but no, I, I had received correspondence that she would not be able to uh, provide any uh, written comments in time for our meeting tonight. The um, builder, uh, Jim Preddy again, the builder did hear from her by phone and then she followed up with an email at 3.13 today, uh, said, I'm so sorry, I could not get comments together during this crazy vaccine time, but if you wanna bring this email, please please feel free. There are a few adjustments that need to be updated, but none that would affect the approval of the plan. The health department will work with you to resolve the minor issues. As far as the conceptual design and location, that can be approved. Thanks, Sonia. Uh, Sonia Marino, health department. So Jim, did Sonia provide any detail as far as what um, needs to change? I mean, tip, my only concern is that when the commission approves a specific plan, if something needs to change on this, I don't want the commission to take action and then have to have you come return to them for a modification. So I, I'm just unclear of the scope of what. Yeah, and I don't really know. Done. She didn't have time for it, but she said they were minor in nature and they wouldn't change the location or the size of the system. So okay. I think we're speaking, Jamie. Uh, Aaron, are we supposed to have these things 24 hours in advance and put them up on the website for public viewing? So th the executive orders um, for the the virtual meetings, yes, they do um, ask that information be uploaded um, to the town website for uh, <laughs> visibility a, a minimum of 24 hours prior. Um, I think that's you know, I think there is language in there that states to the best of people's ability. So that really is up to the commission. Um, it, in a similar fashion, we did receive an email at 425 today from Jamie Sidoriak that had said she um, received the modified plans. Let me see, I have that email. Um, Uh, provided that the commissioners have no other comments or requirements, I'm satisfied with the revised plan showing the wetland delineation. Um, I recommend that the commissioners and applicant continue to consider and apply the wetland setback as set forth in my original letter, um, which was that two feet. Um, on that note, Jim, I had one question as far as uh, this is this has historically been maintained as lawn, those tidal wetlands, or are you proposing, or is there any sort of restoration planting now that we see where the actual tidal line is, uh, the tidal wetland line? Um, are you proposing anything of that nature? To my, knowledge, 
to my knowledge, Jim Freddie again, to my knowledge, it's been lawn pretty much right up to that fence, which kind of runs almost the same line as the wetland line. Um, uh, I don't, there hasn't, you know, we just, obviously we just did this recently, uh, had it flagged. So there wasn't any plans for any sort of a restoration, but again, it, it historically has been lawn up to the fence. Okay. Um, if I can, uh, you know, I could speak to a couple of the comments. Uh, we do show uh, a stockpile with the sow fence enclosure. We are, um, as uh, Jamie had asked, uh, keeping our sow fence and construction limit line well past the her two foot uh, re recommended setback. Um, we could add the orange construction fence that Kevin had asked for. Um, uh, and note that, you know, inspections need to take place with for the erosion controls before construction starts. I mean, that's all pretty um, standard kind of stuff. Um, but so far, I mean, any of the comments that come at late in the game were very easily addressed. Um, Chairman? Yes. Yeah. I have a question for Jim. If yes, you could, sir. Where is the septic exactly located now and where will it be if Marin could... We could see that. Yes. Um. So the existing septic, sorry, Jim Freddy again for skull engineering. Behind the uh, existing house, there's the tank, and mm -hmm. um, and the leach field was somewhere behind that. We don't exactly know where because we didn't go digging for it anywhere, but. Um, during the course of construction, any elements that are encountered will have to be removed and properly disposed of. The new system is out in front of the new house between the house and the street, actually farther away from the tidal wetlands. Um, okay. and, and that will be a new mantis, you know, state-of-the-art kind of mantis system. Um, I said, I, I suppose I should mention that the, uh, the first floor of the house is set at elevation 13. This is a 12, elevation 12 flood zone. So we are at the foot of freeboard it's kind of common to all the shoreline towns um, and the lower level will be built you know to FEMA standards with flood ports and the uh, you know uh, flood resistant materials right that's a, a dry a garage a driving it's just garage a garage and, garage and some storage space yes correct on slab with flood vents yes yeah. right um thank you I don't I don't know how the other commissioners feel but I'm going to say that I, I would personally like to have the comments of the health department no, no, actually come down. provided no. to us so we can read well, it for the I record. Come down. Okay. Um, so I, what I'm going to suggest is that we proceed with public comment, uh, any questions, uh, and then potentially table this to our next meeting so we can get the official comments from the town staff. So we make sure this, we do this correctly. Uh, but I, uh, Jim, I assure you that we'll put you first on the agenda and get you through ASAP, assuming that's okay with other commissioners, unless people feel strongly to the contrary. Frank, you want to talk? No? I'll talk. Richard? I'm, I'm, I'm uh, totally on board with you. I just don't want to go incomplete without these official notifications from the health director. Appreciate that. Yeah, my, my only comment is I just want to be sure that um, based on the comments, I think it was from Deep, um, that uh, plastic is pre-positioned to put over <clears throat> debris material you know, prior to any weather event that might occur during construction. Uh, Jim Pratty again, I um, if we are going to continue this, the couple of comments that we received from Jamie and Kevin, uh, I will actually address on the plan and resend them in so that it's clean for the record for the next Terrific. meeting. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I mean, obviously our, our goal is to get everything right the first time and not to try and go back and cop right. things together. I understand. And, it, and, and it's, you know, I, I not that I account, the town staff accounts to me, but I'm sorry that these comments were not in place earlier. Um, uh, Listen, I understand the health departments have some other more pressing issues at the moment. So we're kind of kicked down the list as, as it is. <laughs> well, let, let me do this. Let's let's move quickly into 
uh, questions and then comments. So that way we um, just have some quick items to continue. Are there any questions from commissioners with respect to this application? I'm, I'm just gonna do a quick, if it's okay with you, a uh, quick screen share for everyone. Just so uh, if you've ever driven down to Jacobs Beach, um, this kind of triangular, this is the lot. Um, if you zoom in, you, actually it's very difficult to see the house, it's right here. So the proposed house, as I'm, as, as I'm looking at the plan, runs this way, if that's correct. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. Um, and if you go to street view, you can see what that house looks like now. I think that's street view. Uh, sorry, not that it matters. You get the idea. It's a triangular lot. It's the last lot before you turn left into Jacobs Beach. So I just thought I would throw that out. Um, so are there any other comments from commissioners? Uh, just to clarify, uh, just to clarify, uh, Jim, the, the house is going to be an elevated structure. Yes, that is correct because of the, because we're removing, I mean, the other house is existing non-conforming in many ways, um, uh, FEMA being one of them. Uh, to build anything new here, we have to meet the new um, standard. So yes, it'll be um, elevated more than the other house for sure. Um, let's see. I, I, I think the plan said 13 feet. Mm -hmm. the, the first the floor, floor is at elevation 13, yeah. the flood zone is 12. So gonna, we're holding that foot of freeboard above the elevation so, 12. Right. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do this again, one second. Sean, it's not on piers. It will have, it is a foundation uh, that will be, um, will function as a garage underneath the first floor. Yeah, these are oh. the architectural drawings. Oh. Okay. So the, it's basically the, the 13 feet is, is <clears throat> the elevated living space. That's correct. Yes. So you, okay. I, I, in this diagram, I think this red line probably represents that. I'm just That's guessing. That's correct. Bench floor. So. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. Um, would anyone from the public like to ask any questions with respect to this application? Again, the scope of our review has to do with the coastal site plan. Um, and so I would ask that you, if you have any questions, that you limit them to the coastal site plan application. Uh, Martha, do you have any questions? Let's unmute you and then you can ask a question with respect to the coastal site plan. Yes, uh, my name is Martha Woodruff. I live at 121 Seaside directly across the street from the proposed uh, plan. Um, just a comment, when some of the neighbors were told originally that the stakes that were put out were for a septic system. Um, so I have to say, uh, it's hard for me to ask a question because I'm a little surprised. I did call when uh, the neighborhood got the letter regarding uh, the building and I was told that uh, nothing would happen or be proposed until the neighborhood was informed. So again, I'm just a little surprised to see um, what I'm seeing here. So my question is, how large is the house? Uh, and there, I believe, is an affirmation that all of the setbacks for the wetlands have been met. Um, so that is in the form of a question. So um, I, what I would do is, um, I'll kick it back to Aaron. Aaron, does the house meet the requirements with respect to the zoning code? Yeah, I think Jim, you could probably, uh, you have a zoning block on your uh, site plan. I know you, uh, mm. where I'm looking. Yeah, usually we do, don't we? I, I... <clears throat> so um, to answer the question for a setback from the critical coastal resource, the tidal wetland is considered the critical coastal resource That's line. Correct. Um, and as, um, and I can show you on this plan, the uh, closest point to the tidal wetland uh, is 25.2 feet to that line. Um, so they're right on that critical coastal resource setback line. Um, as far as lot coverage, um, 
I would I would uh, defer to Jim here for that kind yeah. of question. If you have Jim Preddy, once the other house comes down, we'll be complaining. I mean, the footprint is only about 2,100 square feet. So um, I have my calculator. Uh, we, um, yeah, we're only at about 13% coverage once that other house comes down. So. I'm sorry, Jim, I didn't understand what you said. Uh, the lot coverage by the building, the building's only about 2,100 square feet of the footprint. So the lot coverage is only just over 13% um, of the How entire large lot. Is the how, how large is the house uh, square footage? 2,100. The total square footage? Oh. Uh, no, the to total square footage is a little larger because this, there is another floor. Um, uh, I got somewhere here. So you might have that. There is um, there is a uh, partial second floor. Um, doesn't go over the garage, so it's I'll say it's about another maybe. Uh, 1,300 square feet, I think, on the second floor. Again, Martha, I mean, I understand where you're coming from, but the, the scope of the Planning and Zoning Commission's authority on this is really with respect to the coastal setback. So it, it, it's not, um, you know, as long as it checks all the boxes with respect to height, setbacks, et cetera, that's really not within our review. Uh, the the designer, excuse me, Phil, uh, is indicating uh, 3,464 square feet for the house. Okay. And that it meets all the regulations with respect to the zoning code? So for setbacks, yes, building height uh, is compliant as well based off of the um, uh, flood elevations um, okay and uh, as opposed to existing average grade you get uh, extra Got it. in a flood zone but yes um, um, and lot coverage as Jim had indicated the allowed lot coverage in an R3 zone is 20 percent um, and as he's looking at this the footprint of the building is what would count towards lot coverage uh, and, and Jim is estimating a 13 percent for that. Okay. Does that answer your question, Martha? Um, not exactly, but I'll put it in writing. And I, my understanding is that this is going to go on to the next meeting. Uh, if there are I, further comments. Th that is my hope. And I believe that will be the case. I mean, I thought that's what I heard earlier from um, Sean. I, I believe that we will be continuing this to the next meeting because we don't have comments from the health department. Okay. Okay. If you uh, have specific other... questions in writing, Martha, you can provide those to the Planning and Zoning Commission and they can be read into the record at the next meeting. Uh, or if you okay. need clarification tonight, you can you can ask your question. Okay. Now. Thank you. Would anyone else like to ask a question with respect to this application? Would anyone like to speak in favor of this application? Um, obviously, if your video is not on, I, I cannot tell whether or not you're raising your hand. So um, <laughs> either turn your video on or turn your audio on and it has to be recognized. Um, would anyone like to speak against this application? Uh, with no comments in for or against, would um, some would a commissioner like to make a motion? Do we need any, to do anything else here? I have a, a letter um, from the town historian. Um, okay. Uh, why don't Bill, we see? That, uh, he had asked to, to share on the record. This hey, came Frank, prior to the last. You wanna, you wanna grab that one from Joel? You say me? Uh, Frank, DeAndrea. Oh, Frank. Yep. Okay, um, this is from Joel Hellander yeah. from Wednesday, January 6, 2020, sent to the Planning and Zoning Commission. <laughs> 
I regret that I cannot readily locate Chairman Phil Johnson's email address, but trust that this can be shared with him and other commissioners. This morning, I received notice of tonight's PNZ meeting with a proposal to demolish the existing dwelling house at 122 Seaside Avenue. Although this structure does not appear on the 1981-2015 Historic Resources Inventory, which is the basis or trigger for the delay of demolition ordinance, I would suggest that PNZ not take any quick action on the application. The house at 122 Seaside Avenue is indeed considered historic and can be authenticated to Reuben Hill with the year of construction as 1838. The town's field card date of, quote, 1900, un end quote, is incorrect, as many of the field card dates can be. Houses of this simple style or type vernacular were built as simple timber frame abodes for many Gopher residents who carved out livelihoods from farming or fishing. The very houses that have been lost to teardowns at an alarming rate, especially on Seaside Avenue and Lower Whitfield Street, respectfully submitted Joe Hellander, town historian, Guilford. Thank you. Um, anything else we need to do on this one, Aaron, or can I ask for someone to make a motion to table this to it our meeting? It would be a oh. continuing, um, continuing, Phil, so that you can uh, still receive information. Right, so would someone like to make a motion? Mr. To Chairman, this? Yes. let me ask you, and we're tabling it really just to get the comments, official comments from our health director? Yes. Okay. I make the motion. So we'd a like second. to make a motion. Thanks. That, that's to the February 3rd meeting, and we'll put you first on our agenda for that date. Someone have a second on that? Second. Second. Thank you. I'll call the vote. Scott Edmond? Yes. Sean Cosgrove? Yes. Frank D'Andrea? Yes. Richard Wallace? Yes. And I will also vote to continue this to the third. We'll see you then. And hopefully we can take care of this quick for you, Jim. Thank you for your patience and understanding. Thank you, Thank you folks, for your time. Okay. Next item is Guilford Realty Partners. 351 Whitfield Street, map 28, lot 12, zone I-1 site plan application and coastal site plan to allow two temporary office trailers for four catalyzer in the existing parking lot. Is someone here to present? on behalf of Four Catalyzer. Now, I have spoken with, uh, I was under the impression that Scott Akerst um, would be here to represent um, the applicant. Um, this is a coastal I site plan. I forgot. This is a coastal site plan um, for the location of two temporary office trailers on the property. Excuse me, Aaron, this is Scott Akers, I'm here. I'm oh, Scott, thank you. I'm the whole call, I'm sorry. No, that's good, thank you. I'll share the screen um, of the location, Scott, and you okay. can um, uh, explain to the commission what you're proposing. Uh, I'm proposing, my name is Scott Akers, representing Four Catalyzer at 351 Whitfield Street. Um, we're proposing uh, for two temporary office trailers, uh, one on the north side of the parking lot, it's pictured on uh, to your left, Aaron, a little bit. The other one's the one to the north, that one right there. Um, right, correct. And then also further to your right. So this is just a, this is such a, uh, yeah, it's old site plan. This is Whitfield Street, and you come down their parking lot, the driveway, and the large parking lot. In the the one existing trailer is currently here in in the uh, parking lot, um, and I believe you might have dropped this second trailer now as well. Correct. Um, so this would be in that area that goes off to the rear parking um, alongside the building here. That's good. That's correct, Aaron. I apologize for the for the bad plan. Um, and Scott, how how long are you looking to have these trailers on site? Um, for probably no longer than six months. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we have a couple of letters. The commission have any questions? Yeah. Let's, Let's see. see if we can toss these letters in. Hey, Richard, do you want to grab the letter from Kevin McGee? Certainly, sir. To the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission from Kevin McGee, Environmental Planner, RE Coastal Site Plan, 
Coastal Area Management Review, Guilford Realty Partners, 351 Whitfield Street, Guilford, Connecticut, 06437, Assessor Map 28, Lot 12. The applicant is looking to install a construction trailer on an existing paved parking lot. The proposed work is located in a FEMA AE Elevation 12 flood zone. The coastal po resource policies applicable for the property are development developed shorefront coastal hazard area, tidal wetlands, and inland wetlands. Since the trailer is being placed on an existing paved parking lot and the trailer could be removed during a large coastal flooding event, the work being conducted should not have an impact on the, the adjacent coastal resources. Aaron, I have a quick question. Are there any regulations with respect to dropping trailers in flood zones? I mean, is there any like anchoring uh, requirement? The um, uh, building code as far as any electrical, uh, things like that. Um, is there any anchoring requirement or? I mean, you kind of think it's, if you had a big flood come through it, it's gonna start moving. Yeah, that would be covered under the building code. I'm not, um, I, I don't believe there is um, any elevation or anchoring requirement. Um, but I can, I, I of course, um, refer that to um, our building official. Okay. Well, um, I guess the, the goal- it my, Yes, Richard. It's my, my understanding and from my drive by earlier this week that there is already one trailer there on the north side. I think the I think they just stated that they're both there now. Yes, one uh, Scott can acres can speak to that. I know one is there uh, in the existing parking lot and uh, the power is connected to one of the uh, car charging. Mm -hmm. Stations. Yes, both both trailers are on site. Okay. And how is there asking, run power asking. to the second trailer? Yes, there is, Aaron. Did you have to do a, a temporary service or is that tied into the building? It, it's tied into the building. Okay. So that would be something that the building official could uh, confirm if she needs any permits for that. If, I assume if it's just plugged in, it, it likely does not. Uh, just, just to clarify, trailers have been put in place before an approval by the Planning and Zoning Commission? Temporary office trailers? Is that, that was your question, Sean? Yeah, I, uh, I'm just curious, I mean, is, is the, the approval we're making for an extension of a temporary? This is the first we're hearing of this. No, this is the first time they're seeking approval of a temporary office trailer. Um, and I think Scott can speak to this, but is this uh, as part of uh, reconfiguring office spaces in, in yes, do, the do pandemic? Yes, Aaron, due to the COVID situation with our office size and space requirements for people for spacing, uh, we needed an additional space to reconfigure what we have now. Okay, does that answer your question, Sean? Uh, the part of my question was that they, they put the trailers in place prior to approval, but that, that was my only. This is after the fact. That is correct. Which I, I find um, I just don't find that, you know, approval. <laughs> just you know, you don't you you if you're gonna planning a zoning conviction to get approval, don't do it beforehand and ask for approval. I understand. I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm doing what I'm told to do. Um, I, I feel the same way as you, Sean. I kind of think that things should be done the, the right way. Um, but right now we're looking at the application 
and I don't I mean, there are, there are more egregious things that I've seen done, but nonetheless, um, Scott, if you can convey to the powers that be that tell you to do these things, um, that you know, if you have the resources to do it correctly, we would really appreciate that it be done. I, I understand, Philip. Like I said, you know, do it with the you know the situation with COVID. Uh, it was a necessity that was needed, and I understand. You know, I apologize for the company for the wrongdoings. Um, are there any other questions from commissioners with respect to the site plan um, and coastal site plan application for the two trailers? Um, Frank, is that a question or are you just adjusting your camera? I'm fixing something. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, is there anyone that would like from the public like to ask a question about this? Would anyone like to speak in favor of this? Uh, would anyone like to speak against it? Uh, would someone like to make a motion to close? Someone. Motion to close? Uh, how about Wait. Uh, we did public? I'm sorry. Uh, is there anyone from the public that would like to comment either for or against? <laughs> sorry. Thank you for the... You did that? Yeah. I might have just missed it. I apologize. All right. <laughs> um, we'll make a motion to close. Thank you, sir. Second. Second. Uh, roll call vote. Scott Edmond? Yes. Sean Cosgrove? Yes. Frank D'Andrea? Aye. Richard Wallace? Yes. And I will also vote to close. Um, so we'll go straight to the deliberation of public hearings because we continued Stephen Bergadamo. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Stephen. Um, so we'll go straight to deliberation on Guilford Realty Partners. Um, would someone like to make a motion? I'll make the motion, Mr. Chairman. Proposed motion voted the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission approve a site plan and coastal pl site plan application for Guilford Realty Partners 351 Whitfield Street, Map 28, Lot 12 to allow temporary office trailers on shown as an application dated 102820 and as described at a public hearing on January 20th, 2021. The application is approved with the following condition that the trailer be removed on or before September 1st of 2021. This application is approved based upon finding that it conforms with the zoning code and is consistent with the coastal management policies of the state of Connecticut. Thank you. Um, Aaron, do you think we should add that um, any conditions imposed by the building official with respect to flood zone concerns um, be incorporated? Do we need to do that? Or does she have the authority to do that without our? No, he, any, any necessary permits would would be covered under the building code so i think we're we're safe there thank you uh, we have a motion would someone like to make a second 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 good discussion what do you think i know what sean thinks um you, scott how about you you yeah, I, mean, I feel similarly but unfortunately we don't have a lot of teeth when it comes to these kinds of things richard i think we might be seeing another one in a little bit too you know, uh, uh, if if it should look like the cat that swallowed the canary. Well, um, you know, I'm again. You know, I, I know COVID is a great thing that we're all enjoying, but everyone else is also kind of trying to adhere by the rules and not just go first and ask permission later. Um, but. Um, I'm I'm in favor of approving this, um, with the caveat that if if they come before us again with an after effect, that I will be vehemently against it. So let's do this right from now on. I understand, Christian. Thank you. Um, so we have a motion. We have a second. Any other comments from commissioners? Just oh, uh, nope. start, Richard. I'm in favor of it, but yes, again, I'm with you on this after the fact stuff. 
Yep. And we are an extraordinary time, so. I hear you. Okay, I'll call, I'm gonna call the vote then. Uh, Scott Edmond? Yes. Sean Cosgrove? No. Frank D'Andrea? Yep. Richard Wallace? Yes. Uh, I will vote reluctantly yes. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Scott. Sorry to give you a hard time. It wasn't your fault, but you can convey the <laughs> disdain of the Planning and Zoning Commissioner for having to. I understand. And I appreciate everybody. Um, I relate to the higher above. I appreciate that. Good luck. Thank you very much, everyone. All right. What do we got? We got um, uh, upcoming application for Amy Gold Farm. Public hearing is tabled at 2 3. Ocean Co. 506 Whitfield Street. Coastal Site Plan permit application to allow outdoor music. That's 317. Garrett Sullivan. Uh, what's a site plan application? Uh, that we're, are we going to deal with that one tonight? Yes, is Garrett is here. Um, to... let, me, let, me, let me read that in officially then. Garrett Sullivan, 439 Boston Post Road, map 49, lot 25, zone TS. Site plan application to convert retail play cafe into preschool with installation of associated fenced play area. Um, is someone here? Garrett, I see that you're there. So I'm trying to unmute you. Has to unmute. There he is. Can you hear us, Garrett? There yes. Go. How are you? How are you? Good. Tell us what's going on, Garrett. We are trying to roll with every punch that we're being hit with, uh, trying to open up an indoor play area in the middle of COVID has proved to be more difficult than expected. Um, but here we are. So the latest and greatest plan is we are turning it into a licensed preschool. Um, with that, there's a few different state regs we need to do with the Office of Early Childhood. And one is an outdoor play space. Um, I've been doing this for, I don't know, Aaron will probably know better than I do, a month, two months maybe at this point. Um, changed the plan around a few times. Um, it's been approved by Design Review Committee and Inland Wetland. Um, and I'm hoping it goes in a nice solid direction with you folks tonight. Uh, the playground is going to be in the back of the building. Um, Garrett, I'll share your the survey of your property here. Perfect. Uh, just in case the commission is unaware, this is the, the former mattress of uh, mattress firm um, across from the health food store on the Boston Post Road. Um, pretty much a, a one way through here. This is the existing uh, building area. Um, so as Garrett was um, explaining, this is, you've gone through a, a couple of iterations of this plan um, and working with staff to try to get um, the level of detail I think that we were comfortable with um, bringing to the commission. You can see in Garrett, you can kind of go through your, your process here, but this, this was the original plan you proposed showing um, a location here for your play yard. Um, uh, for the students, I think, how, how many students are you proposing? Uh, max 16 students. And the only reason that's the max is because of the uh, amount of bathrooms. So the state requires uh, 16 children, max 16 per bathroom. Okay. Uh, and then another bathroom for staff. So there's two bathrooms there, so. Okay, so at, at the recommendation of both uh, town engineer, myself, um, and design review committee, um, we had suggested to, to Garrett to um, that, that a, a safer location so that children were crossing the driveway and proximity to the post road that it might make sense to locate the um, play area to the rear of the building. Um, we have also been pretty um, steady in our comments and Garrett will uh, attest to this that staff has been recommending a professionally prepared plan um, for the property for quite some time just to ensure a level of detail of um, 
the materials that the play yard uh, will consist of, as well as um, proper circulation and, and safety um, on the site. And so um, <clears throat> this, this plan has um, been updated and I, I can share with you our, our more recent, our, excuse me, Garrett's more recent drawing here. And I'd like to just point out that I didn't do this before going to uh, to the commission. What's that? Following following the uh, the last uh, gentleman, I'm going trying to do things the right way with you guys. Oh, it's not built. <laughs> no. It depends good. how this meeting goes. I might go down tonight. <laughs> um, so I'm this is, cold. <laughs> just to. Um, Kind of. Uh, can you can you rotate that? Um, I cannot on this drawing. Um, my other computer has an Adobe. This so this is a side coming through the side portion of the driveway. Uh, so this is this area back here is the rear of the building, um, and so uh, essentially, Garrett, if you can kind of describe this. You have some utilities in here. Um, right. This so is I'll, access way. Yeah, I'll go ahead and give a, a quick um, a rundown here. So you'll notice right up against the building, there is a seven foot gap, um, which will be fenced in. Uh, that's where a couple HVAC, unit, unit, HVAC units are, uh, some propane tanks, um, so what we'll do is just have a six foot vinyl high fence, uh, six foot high vinyl fence, just running down, blocking all that. Um, a, it looks better if the kids aren't staring at that. Um, and of course, you know, safety, uh, the seven feet will give, you know, enough room if we have to have, uh, maintenance workers come in there and, and check on anything. So you have two exits from the building to access this play yard, one here and then one further to the west here. Is that correct? Correct. correct. So there's two back doors to this building uh, on either side. Um, so the thought was, you know, it'll be the best for the children to go right from building to playground rather than crossing uh, 19, 20 feet onto the side playground. So, you know, with that being said, um, there will be, you know, enough room for the door to open there. It's um, a fire safety door, two forms of egress. There'll also be an eight foot gate. Uh, if you look at the top of the screen, um, two four footers that will allow, you know, if we need to get any equipment into the playground. Um, is, is, this, is this the edge of the fencing or is this rounded? It's the rounded one. I, I don't know why I, I wish I had a better excuse. Um, I drew the, the squared up one first, um, but I, I like the, the rounded one. I just didn't erase the square. You still have enough room to swing wide um, because there is about 36 square, uh, 36 feet uh, for the edge of the building to the curb, if you can see in the top of the screen so this there. This line is the curb line? Yes. And this is a newly paved parking lot. Um, so to explain a, a little bit, Garrett, of what this play yard will consist of as far as materials, how is it going to be um, built? Sure. On, so the, you're, you're building on top of the existing parking lot. Right. It, it kills me to be doing that. It's freshly paved within probably six months, but uh, it is what it is and we're having to adjust. So with that being said, there's going to be three inches of gravel laid down first with a layer of geotextile fabric, which is that black, you know, weed material that you put in gardens. Um, on top of that will be eight inches of wood chips. Um, and that comes from the state of Connecticut and what's suggested for playgrounds. Um, they're not supposed to be on top of grass um, or directly on top of a dirt, like a lot of the playgrounds in town here, but um, that's what's suggested. So that's what we're going to do. That also provides uh, drainage. So 
how will you contain that material at the edge of the play yard if you're gonna proposing have, chain link fencing correct so there's going to be a five foot high chain link fence going around with that vinyl rubberized material um, on it just for safety uh, but to keep the wood chips in there's going to be two uh, railroad ties on top of one another um, six by sixes so a total of 12 inches um, that'll keep everything in the playground rather than you know running out through the chain link and so so some of the concern is that this plan lacks a, a what um, we would call a detail showing that section of the play yard. Um, typically when you have a site development plan, you would have some type of detail for the contractor to follow. I know that Garrett has explained this in his narrative, um, but it is somewhat unclear on this particular site plan. Um, to talk about these exits from the building um, briefly, Garrett, the what, what is the change? There aren't any um, grade elevations indicated on this site plan. Um, so what is, the, you're showing some steps down. So the, the doorway is lower than the play yard. Is that what you're showing? Mm -hmm. Right. So, I mean, if you, if you just do the math on number one there with all the layers, um, obviously the playground is going to be elevated. Uh, the back door is flush with the pavement, so there will be uh, a couple steps needed to be get uh, to get into uh, the play yard. So there's no gate at the top of those steps, right? Uh, we may. I didn't put one on there. I was debating it to be honest with you. Um, so I'm sorry. I mean, I would follow whatever is. Are you walking up to the play yard or down from the building? Up. Up. Working up, so you know, my 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 comment is that you're putting, if I understand you correctly, Garrett, you're putting plastic material on top of an impervious surface, which surface which is already the paved area right behind the building, and then you know you've got you've got this doorway which goes down with steps, I would just think that the drainage would not favor you at all in terms of, you know, water going down into the building. I'm just not sure if, um, unless the grade of the, of the property flows, flows east, I mean, flows west. Well, right, it, it does slightly. Yeah, you know, if you're, if you're familiar with the space and familiar with the building, um, it's right where you're going, you know, if you're going north or east of right. Route 1, right. uh, there is a little bit of a, a grade back there. So the water will flow. Yeah. So it won't, it won't um, flow east. Wetland, you know, this was a conversation with... Go ahead. With the Wetlands Commission. Right. So, the, and I, I do have a memo from Kevin that I'll... Um, read in as well, uh, we can read in as well, Garrett. Um, so so these are roughly six inch steps then to get up, because you're talking about a one foot difference in grade. Um, okay, so to share, this is essentially the, the site plan that um, is being proposed to the commission um, for, the, for the approval of, of the outdoor play yard for the school. Um, Aaron, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna share a quick Google Earth, okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, so this is the site. It's uh, right behind Exit 59. Is that correct? Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. right so you can get a sense for what's here, and obviously the entrance, and then the play area would go in the back here. That's right. Couple. You're no. looking to have that as a one-way. Um, it's already. It's currently a one-way right now. Um, so oh, we'll it, remain. It signed as a one-way. Okay. 
we actually have a couple of memos. So uh, Scott, you want to grab the one from Janice and Sean or, or Frank? How about you grab the one from Kevin after? Sure. Uh, two planning and zoning commission from Janice Blazniak, town engineer, uh, dated January 19, 2021, RE Play Cafe site plan application. 439 Boston Post Road. I recommend to the commission that a professional site plan for this site, along with details on construction methods and materials, be submitted for this application. Uh, my review of the hand sketch provided by the applicant compared to the site plan on file in our offices does not correlate to the driveway width uh, indicated on the hand drawn plan. And in some cases, the driveway aisle may be less than 14 feet width if the dimensions of the playground are held. Uh, is a 14 foot paved area sufficient for emergency trucks and delivery trucks to drive around a fenced playground occupied by children? Uh, should bollards or other protective devices be installed? The purpose of a licensed engineer stamp on such a plan is to ensure a safe and compliant plan. I agree that the location of the playground is much better behind the building. I'm just concerned about the sizing of the playground relative to the site uh, circulation requirements and details of construction for the site to ensure safety and proper stormwater management. Okay. Frank, you want to grab Kevin's? Sure. Can you put it up for me? Sure. Thank you to Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission from Kevin McGee, our environmental planner, dated January 19th, 2021. Uh, the applicant is proposing to modify the existing site plan to include a playground to be installed on the top of the existing pavement on the north side of the building. A wetlands area is located on the abutting property to the east. The Guilford Inland and Wetlands Commission at its January 13th, 2021 meeting approved the regulating activity for an outdoor playground for preschool within the 100 foot upland review area with conditions. We also have comments um from the design review committee, at least uh, a portion of their, their minutes uh, so that the commission is aware of what uh, their discussion was. I can share those as well. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> wow. Um, so this is this, this is, these are the notes from the second, um, visit that Garrett had with um, the committee. Um, and I'm trying to get to some of the points here. Um, you know, the committee understood there would be three inches of gravel, eight inches of wood chips, um, you know, with a chain link fence and post in the ground. Um, and that there would be a need to have some type of perimeter inside the fence to contain the wood chips. Um, and Garrett considered using railroad ties and spacing them out by the post to allow water to drain through. Um, let's see. Um, uh, the committee as it's, uh, had, Many members, our architects, were concerned with uh, ADA accessibility and emergency egress, um, and I and, and did recommend that Garrett speak with uh, the building official, who is the authority on both. Um, and uh, Garrett, I think you could probably recap your conversation with Kim um, as to some of these questions. Sure, I, I spoke with Kim um, after I already spoke to the Office of Early Childhood. Um, and it's, it's odd, I had two different answers. Um, the Office of Early Childhood, which, who, which is, they're the ones that license preschools and educational institutions, um, said there are no requirements for ADA specifications unless we get a child or staff member uh, that needs um, some of those requirements met. Um, Kim, the building official, said she had called the ADA, and of course, guy got a laundry list of items, um, which, you know, listen, I'd be happy to do. If I need to put a, a ramp up or have a temporary ramp to get in and out of the playground, I'm happy to do that. That's not a problem. 
Um, but I do need to look into it further and maybe get something in writing from Office of Early Childhood um, with, with what they said as far as requirements. They are the ones licensing the facility. Um, Kim mentioned, you know, the wood chips um, that wouldn't work with with a wheelchair. Um, you know, if you go to Jacobs Beach or Melissa Jones Playground, which is fairly new, they're wood chips. Um, so again, uh, there needs to be some more digging in that. Um, but whatever needs to be done, you know, certainly we're not leaving anybody out. Um, if we need to have a ramp in there for somebody to access that, that's simple enough. I own a home care company, so we can get that taken care of, not a problem. Um, Janice also mentioned the uh, emergency vehicles uh, going around the building and the 14 foot measurement wasn't correct. Um, I can tell you personally, I went out there with a 25 foot tape measure and measured it. Uh, it's 14 feet at the narrowest spot on the west side of the building. Um, if someone else would like to go measure, that's perfectly fine with me. Um, the drawings are accurate and they're detailed. Um, you know, I did explain what's needed uh, as far as the layering. Um, I didn't, I can draw three lines if that would help somebody understand it. But, you know, as far as the, the different layers we need, um, it's on the site map and it's also on the uh, summary that I attached as well, uh, if there's any questions. But I'm happy to answer questions and I've listened to everybody, all staff members, done what they've asked. I had to go to the design review committee twice, wetlands once, passed both, got approval. Here I am. We're trying to make it, this work with Play Cafe and every month that goes by, um, you know, it, it's a financial hardship. I'm doing what I can and I'm doing it the right way. And I think that should say something. Um, I'm sure I could find a fence company that would put one up and I could throw some wood chips in there and call it a day and then ask for forgiveness in three months. Um, but that's not who I am. Uh, I've done what I've been asked and I think I've done it detailed and done it well. And happy to answer more questions if people have them. Um, I guess my, my concern has to do with um, you know, we're signing off on this mm -hmm. as a commission and, and, and I appreciate your diligence on this, but, you know, it, it gives us a little more insulation if there's a certified engineered plan as opposed to a hand-drawn plan. Speak. I, I just need to get this through my head and I think um, Sean can probably agree with me. The hand-drawn map that went before me with Guilford Realty and the fact that they did it three months ahead of time and just did it. I mean, I, I drew a detailed map. I did what I was asked. I covered all the bases as far as measurements, as far as layers, widths, egresses. I, and I appreciate that. And I would say that we're not really making an apples to apples comparison because there um, are a couple of temporary construction trailers for adults versus an outside play area for, I'm assuming young children. You know, I don't know, you haven't specified an age range, but I'm assuming it's two to four, two to five or something of that nature. And, um, and Garrett, Garrett, I would just add, um, you know, I feel your pain. I've, I've not tried to undertake a project like this, but you, you have to consider the fact that you're on, I know, I know you have, but you're on a very busy road. And, you know, it, it, it's, I think Phil's comments should be taken to heart. It, we, we have to, you know, normally projects like this do get a, get a not just a design review, but an engineer's review. And while you're, while you're, Design might be fantastic, and an engineer might say it's fantastic. It, it, it you protect yourself to the nth degree if you, you know, went the extra mile. I know everyone's concerned of safety, and I, I feel like everyone, you know, if I can speak casually here, is kind of bouncing around and tiptoeing around 
you know, whenever something's brought up and I, I seem to come up with a solution that's agreed upon, it, it gets moved on to something else. Um, you know, the emergency vehicles has never been brought up to me before, except for Janice's email four hours ago, um, maybe five at this point. Um, you know, everything they, they say, move it from here to there. Uh, the drainage is an issue. We solved the drainage with the layers. Wetland approved it. I understand that 100%. Um, Safety is an issue. I understand Route 1 is right there. The on-ramp is right there. The five-foot fence meets the state requirements. So, I mean, as far as a traffic pattern and being on Route 1, what we've talked about tonight is is a moot point. That's just something else that's been added right now to the agenda. I, I don't know what an engineer will do differently, uh, in all honesty. Well, it'll Except be cost certified. Me another four thousand dollars. It'll all be right. certified. It'll be. You say it's drawn to scale. And like you said, we can go out and measure, but we're not professional engineers either. Yeah. Um, I think it's the certification, knowing that we're putting our name behind something that is certified. And, you know, I hope you appreciate that we're all volunteers doing this and that we really need to rely on town staff and professionals. And when the town engineer, you know, strongly suggests that a professional plan be submitted on this, you know, we, we give that a lot of weight. Yeah, Garrett, Garrett we, 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 we do not, as a as commission, and I, I do not, as myself, want to stand in your way. I, that's not what we're talking about tonight. But when we get documentation from a town official that suggests to us, as a professional, that, you know, you, you need to do a little bit more Please do a little bit more and we'll, we'll be happy to stand behind you. Um, what I might suggest, Garrett, as a because I don't get the sense that this is going to get approved as it stands right now, um, is that we continue this potentially to our next meeting unless you want us to proceed forward. I'll, 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 I will kick that back to you and let you you know, decide how you'd like us to proceed. We there, we have a motion before us, or we could have a motion before us, or we could continue this to our next meeting and, and hopefully um, have a little more information that allows us to proceed. It's just, it's very sad in these times right now that now I have to go spend thousands and thousands of dollars to get someone to, to stamp something so everyone feels comfortable with it. When I've gone out and I've done the work and I've done what's been asked of me, it's very sad. Yet we can put tables for restaurants that are suffering on sidewalks within inches of roads and vehicles. And I'm all for that 100%. But it needs to go both ways. When someone else, the, media, the, the person before me, did something three months, whether it's kids or not involved, it did the wrong thing. That's telling me I should go out and put a fence in and dump some wood chips in and ask for forgiveness. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do it the right way. And if people bring up concerns, I'm happy to address them. But just saying, well, because there's no engineer involved, the drawing's there. It, it's from the, the actual town measurements on, on the website. I mean, I, I don't know what else to do, except write a check for $3,000 so everyone here feels comfortable. Garrett, I, I think were you were you ever asked in the process that you should get a professional engineer site plan for this type of change? Mm -hmm. it, I, it's been so this isn't just brought upon you today, right? Nope. And you chose not to. Correct. I said I will I will right. do what's asked of me as far as making this adjustment and that adjustment, moving it, doing the different layers, contacting Office of Early Childhood. So I've I've done all the answers. I've I've done what a, a surveyor or engineer would have done. I went out there and measurement to have to have the exact measurements. There's, I mean, it's putting in a playground. The fence is high enough, safety wise. It's against the building. Um, you know, we put this off another month. 
Yeah, maybe we won't be here in another month because the next, the, the next meeting is on February third, so it's two okay. weeks. And so I, I'm supposed to get an engineer to go out and stamp this in two weeks. If you can, I mean, I, I, again, I'm 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 yeah. doing my best to try and move this forward as as best as we can for you. Um, and I and I'll I'll leave it to you. Do you want us to try and act on this tonight, or do you want us to table this till the next meeting? Or well, what, if it gets acted on tonight and it's a no-go, I yep. guess, what's the next step? Uh, if you were to well, come back, Aaron, help me out here. Does the so plan Gary, Just to back up slightly, I, I'm kind of still thinking about your comments of ADA accessibility and materials that can be used and whether a ramp is required. And it seems that based on whatever, I was not part of that conversation that you had with the building official. And so if if the building official is recommending uh, particular uh, accommodations as part of that playground and they're not shown on this plan, that is relevant to whether or not the commission should be approving this plan versus you know if it needs a ramp, if there needs to be a ramp, then that could potentially move the locations of the fencing or affect traffic. Um, so that that should be ironed out before action with the commission. Um, I, I, and it doesn't sound like you have answers of that, that that you receive your your impression was that you received two different um, answers of what was required on that. Um, so right. I, I, I for one would like to understand and get an official uh, response as far as what is required for um, accessibility to that playground. Um, that, you know, whether or not the commission will accept those modifications to be on a hand drawn, uh, you know, illustration versus a professionally prepared plan. Um, that that is up to the commission, but I, I do think that is some information that we're lacking right now to make a decision tonight. Um, so I'm just going to throw this out. Um, would someone like to make a motion to continue this to our meeting of February 3rd? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Um, I just think there are too many questions that we have right now. And I, I don't want to deny this and set you back even further. Um, so I'll call the vote on a motion to continue. Scott Edmond. Yes. Sean Cosgrove. Yes. Frank D'Andrea. Oh, yes. Richard Wallace. Yes. And I will also vote to continue. I will do my best to work with staff and with you to try and get you what you need uh, and get us what we need. Uh, I appreciate it's disappointing, um, but we're trying to do our best, so. Are uh, we all? I know. Um, next item is CMI Power and Landscape Supply, 2392 Boston Post Road, Map 78, Lot 16, Zone TS2, Site Plan Application for Outdoor Display and Storage of Drainage Supplies and Landscape Materials for Retail Sales. Is someone here on behalf of CMI Power? No, I ah. did not see Jim Pentonito. Um, case, so this, up. yeah, this is a site plan modification for outdoor display and Jim did meet with the design review committee last week. Um, and they did make recommendations and Jim was agreeable to those. Um, and clearly he forgot to come to tonight's. Well, uh, I appreciate so that. I but think it probably would be helpful to have him here. Um, I mean, I can kind of give you an overview of his I mean, plan that I don't really plan. want to present on his behalf. Let, let's put him third on the agenda for February 3rd. Would someone like to make a motion to? So moved. So moved. Second. Uh, call the vote. Uh, Scott Edmond. Yes. John Cosgrove. Yes. Frank Andrea. Aye. Richard Wallace. Yes. I'll also go on our February 3rd. We have new applications from Dina Natra. Um, 2614 Boston Post Road, map 83, lot 20A, zone TS3, site plan request to convert a portion of a barn, a 900 square foot apartment. Uh, we will receive in table to 2321. 
Uh, the next one, uh, do we need to vote on those individually, Aaron? Um, all, all of these you can um, do it once. Take action on. I think they're all different dates, unfortunately. Well, the two last ones are the same date, but the first. Well, uh, so we'll see even take action. You okay with that, Scott? Yes. Sean? Yes. Frank? Yes. Richard Wallace? Yes. And I also, we will see that on the third. It's going to be a busy meeting on the third. Brittany Myrl, Merrill's? Merle. 45, Merle, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. 45 Clear Lake Road, map 95, lot 23, zone R5, special permit for section 27319 for accessory apartment, receive and set public hearing date for 217. Um, Scott, you okay with that? Yes. Sean? Yes. Frank? Aye. Mr. Wallace? Yes. And I will also vote yes. We'll see that on the 17th. The last two are for the 3rd of March. 33 Vineyard Place, LLC, uh, map two, lot 36, zone R2, coastal site plan application to remove existing studio building and replace with decking, removal of elevator and construct new porch on existing deck framing. Uh, the other one is for Peter M. Jackman, 52 Vineyard Avenue, map two, lot 16, zone R2, coastal site plan application to construct in-ground swimming pool associated with patio and landscape improvements driveway modification and relocate septic system. That's a big project. Set both of these, um, receive and set public hearing for March 3rd. Um, Richard Wallace, you okay? Yes. Frank DeAndrea. Yes. Sean Cosgrove. Aye. Scott Edmond. Yes. I shall also vote for that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Aaron, under other business, discuss the process and schedule for reviewing of proposed zoning and subdivision code. Maybe I could uh, introduce that subject, uh, Mr. Chairman. Certainly, thank uh, you. Um, we are very close to having final draft of the proposed new zoning code. Um, we have a final draft of proposed new subdivision code, which we're uh, reviewing right now with town council. Uh, we expect to complete the final draft of the zoning code, including a, a, a town council review uh, within the next couple of weeks. And we want to therefore, uh, probably sometime in February, uh, maybe toward the end of the month, uh, begin to review it with you all. So we wanna talk to you and get your feeling. You don't have to make any kind of final decisions about this right now, but we wanna get your feelings for how you really want to do this, how much time you want to put into it, and what types of meetings do we want to have in order to go over the proposed drafts. Our thought is that we would um, send to all the commission members the draft documents. Um, both the subdivision code and the zoning codes have been uh, uh, in a sidebar. Items where we think the commission's attention should be focused are noted uh, in the sidebar uh, in the proposed texts. So it's not like we have to go over every single word of the zoning code, uh, but we obviously can if you want to. Uh, so our thought is we would send that to you maybe toward the end of February and initiate a series of meetings to uh, with our consultant, Glenn Childer and Aaron and I to discuss uh, your thoughts. Um, I think we are pretty convinced that doing that at a regular meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission, like at this hour of the night, is probably not gonna be very efficacious. And therefore, it probably means that we're going to have to either set aside some regular meeting dates for the zoning, Planning and Zoning Commission review or set up some additional dates uh, or some combination of those two things. Uh, we also, have the possibility of meeting sometimes during the day uh, if you commission members want to do that. So what we're really looking for right now is your feedback on how you would like to proceed uh, with that review. Um, George, how many, how, how many meetings would you anticipate and of well, what duration? Well, I think well, that, de that depends on how many questions you have, but yes. <laughs> Go ahead, Aaron. Yeah. And Glenn kind of estimated um, as far as chapters, you know, the, that the regulations will be broken down into chapters. And his goal was some uh, three chapters per meeting. 
and uh, say you met once a month, that would be roughly three months worth of work. So it's up to the commission too, how <laughs> often you'd like to meet um, to. Well, one of the things we have, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, one of the things we have noticed in doing the staff review is, you know, an hour and an hour and a half is about as much time as you can really tolerate, you know, discussing this subject before it begins to get really tedious. Mm -hmm. And so my suggestion is that the commission meetings where we would discuss these things would probably be on that duration, an hour and a half, two hours at the most uh, per, per session. My initial inclination is to, to add, you know, we meet on the first and third Wednesday of each month to potentially add the next Wednesday That's and just limit it to an hour and a half. I would ask that um, I, I host other um, oh. board meetings every other Wednesday, okay, uh, whether it's wetlands or ZBA. <laughs> so what's that? Could you cancel those? I mean, I would those? love to. <laughs> really opens things up. <laughs> uh, uh, well, I mean, my point is, I think I, uh, if we could agree that I, I think having a dedicated meeting of a limited time in duration at a specified time that works with you and George. And, and, just, a, and just a question: are, are these are these proposed meetings to discuss the new, you know, zoning regs? Are they public or are they just among us and Glenn? Well, they are, they, they are right, like a regular planning and zoning commission meeting. They're open to the public, but we're not gonna be inviting the public to make any comments. That will come subsequent to your review. Once we've completed your okay. review and make all right. the edits, right. then we right. would have public hearings uh, with, the, with, the, with the public. We also talked about the possibility of kind of simultaneously as we review the project with you, <laughs> meeting with some individual uh, members of the public, especially some of those folks who have regular business with us, such as the local, some of the surveyors and engineers that meet with us frequently. Yeah. We yeah. might sort of meet with them separately to get their feedback, uh, independent of the generalized public uh, public hearing meetings, but we haven't really resolved that yet. Well, uh, and so, so George, <laughs> those are these, the kind of stakeholders that had input with Glenn in the early stages of this project. Right. Yes. Yeah, some of those, we yeah. would, we would, oh. I mean, we have to limit the number of meetings, uh, both for our sake and also because of the consultants and the limitations we have on the budget. Um, but yes, we'll, you know, we'll have to feel our way around how to do that exactly. It, it was my understanding, George, that Glenn, <laughs> after the commission reviewed, was planning on a, a public input meeting. Right. Yeah. Uh, before the actual public hearing where he would have a PowerPoint presentation, to, uh, more of an in, informational meeting, right. um, and then potentially any revisions that would want to be considered and then moving forward to the public. Uh, and, 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 I, yeah. and, you know, think about this. If all of the people in a public meeting that could meet in person were over the age of 65 or, or, and we were all vaccinated, we could do a meeting in March or Fe or April. It's possible. Yeah, if we, I think that's a little early. <laughs> I know. I, I'm, um, being, I'm being facetious. Being facetious. And I think you know some of what Glenn had had pointed out in our timetable really was a surprise to me a little bit that he you know was pushed more that adoption would be closer to the fall. Um, okay. Yeah for yeah. this you know yeah. as far as whether or not the commission wants to have public hearings during the summertime and um and also any other notific you know regional uh notifications and things like that um but just you know at least to get started and and moving forward glenn is willing to meet on a saturday morning if that works for people if you'd prefer you know depending on work schedules if you know an afternoon time works or a morning um, George and I can, uh, you know, make our schedules work for the most part or other week, weekday evenings as well. Um, I don't um, know, George, do you have any other weekday evening obligations for meetings? Not, not those, not on a regular basis. Uh, yeah. uh, Aaron, how about if instead of a separate day, um, for one of the meetings of our planning and zoning, instead of starting at 7.30, we started at 6. 
and then there would be a hard stop at 730 to do the business of the Planning and Zoning Commission. You could do that. Yeah. Does that, does that sound reasonable to the commissioners? I like that. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 provi it provides us with a hard stop time, and then we can continue the business, and it's not an extra date. I, I like that idea. Now, would you, is that something that you would want to do one meeting a month? Yeah, the second the second meeting of the month, would we would schedule this portion of it from six to seven thirty. Yeah, we can try to do that. Okay. But, but, yeah, we can see how it works. Yeah, right. Great. I mean, obviously, if it's not going to, if it doesn't work, we will pivot. That's the, the new term, right? Um, pivot. <laughs> And we'd right. still be doing I this think, by I think we have a plan. Um, did anyone have a chance to take a look at the minutes? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I did, and they're relatively substantially correct. Thank you. Um, so I, I'm assuming you're making a motion to approve. So moved. Would someone like to second that? Second. Thank you. I'll call the vote. Scott Edmond. Yes. Sean Cosgrove. Aye. Frank DeAndrea. Yeah. Richard Wallace? Yes. <laughs> I will also vote to approve that. Uh, with no further business before the commission besides scheduling our longer than usual meetings in the future, um, would someone like to make a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you, sir. Second. All in favor, sure raise your hand. Uh, looks like it's unanimous. Thank all you very right. much for all your efforts, everyone. Thanks, all. Adios, hasta luego. Stay safe. <laughs> You too. Bye. Bye-bye.